name is Tashawn Hood. I'm 14 years old and I'm part of the GOU trip. I really appreciate what they're doing for me. Going to Seattle, Washington today at 8.25. On October 6, 2010, eight young people left their homes in Memphis. Yeah, I'm kind of nervous, but also I'm excited. I feel exhilarated about going on this trip. So far, this has been the biggest trip I've been on. To travel to the rugged wilderness of the North Cascade Mountains. I'm looking forward to seeing some different trees, some animals, and see how thin the earth can get. I'm mostly excited about the hikes, because I hope I get to see new things, such as new species of animals and amphibians. I want to see a bear while I'm up here, so. You see a bear? I ain't never seen a bear. It was the trip of a lifetime, a trip that would change their lives. Just a real deal right here. When he found out he was going on a trip, I had called my mom. He said, Mama, okay, you call grandmama, call great grandmama. I need for you to call pastor. I need for you to call um, Uncle T. He wanted everybody in the family to know, everybody in the church to know. He just wanted everybody to know, everybody in the school. Excitement. That's what 10-year-old Roman Like felt when he found out he was going on a trip most people only dream of. He wasn't alone. Joining him were Cyrus, Jire, Eric, Jackson, Alfonso, Demetrius, and Tashawn, leaving their inner city lives behind to experience one of the most spectacular mountain ranges in the world. Trees, some of which grow 200 feet tall and are 1,000 years old, just carpet the mountains. These mountains are the youngest geologically of any mountain range in the lower 48. So they're very steep-sided. The peaks are very jagged, knife edge. 98% of the glaciers in the lower 48 are in the Cascades. Hence, there's water everywhere. There are waterfalls and it's just very dramatic. At the same time, it's serene. It's just a spectacular place. These mountains had become something of a second home for Memphis businessman Peter Scott, a place to which he was deeply connected. Wanting to share that connection, Peter and the Tennessee Wildlife Federation invited the eight youngsters to come along on a journey of discovery, hiking, camping, and exploring the Cascades backcountry for five days. The cost of the trip was donated. All the boys needed to bring was their enthusiasm and a sense of adventure. Many of them had never traveled outside of Memphis. For all but one, it was their first time to fly. Everything just lean back and you take off. Like you going out of space. My ears start hurting. And then I was looking at the window. When we start leaning, I start hug grabbing on stuff. I looked out the window and it was a field of clouds. And you couldn't see nothing but clouds. From high in the air, they got their first look at the frozen peaks of the North Cascades. But seeing them from a distance was nothing like seeing them up close. When we got off the highway into that environment, you could sort of feel a sense of awe. It was just beautiful. The scenery, everything looked like on the movies or something. There's trees and trees, all kinds. I've never seen green like that. Like that green and that, you know, just full and it's just the colors of some of the other trees were like red and just, not like red, but like red, you know, like really, really red. And it's just, oh, it's just beautiful. After spending a long day traveling, everyone was ready to explore. Mr. Peter wanted to show us around the cabins and we saw these very extremely tall trees. There's some old growth forest there, which they've never seen, you know, trees eight to 10 feet across, six or 700 years old. Well, I felt scrawny because I was short. I looked up, so there were some tall trees, like redwood. 
and we saw this nearby creek, which was fresh water. And I said, you know, this creek is so clean, you can drink some water, so why don't you try it? They spent 30 minutes drinking water. Oh, you're getting wet. It was cold. We put our face in it. It just tastes so good, fresh. You can taste the freshness. And then, throughout the next two days when we were hiking, every time we would, the party would cross a creek that crossed the trail, everybody would stop, take their pack off, stick their head in the water or their hands, throw it on over their face, fill up their water bottle. It was just a universal uh, magnet to these kids. And they were all talking about, well, this water out of this waterfall was better than the one before. And I bet the higher we get, the better it'll be. I know hike over mountain. On day two, it was time for the Memphis kids to meet the mountain trails. We can't see nobody. We just after hiking, hiking and hiking. All the boys had been on hikes before, thanks to their involvement in Great Outdoors University, a program Peter had started in partnership with the Tennessee Wildlife Federation, with the hope of giving city kids with little or no access to nature opportunities to experience the great outdoors. But hiking the flatlands of West Tennessee couldn't really prepare them for this. As we went on, just wondering when it was going to be over and just waiting for that moment. Because you were just ready to just sit down. My legs were tired. It was hard. You had to be in shape to come up here. While the mountain trails pushed the boys' physical and mental endurance, there were rewards along the way, including an up-close encounter with nature. They was telling us there were birds out there that snatched the trail mix out your hand. And a bird just came right by us and flew by and ate it. So we just hold out our hand, and you know, the bird just started coming in our hand. I put one on my head, and one flew on my head. Never saw like, a bird in your hand before, so. The claws were kind of just a little sticky feeling, but we got used to it. It was a huge experience for them to be able to do that, and there's kind of no bigger connection than to feed a wild animal out of your hand. The animals weren't the only ones getting fed. Along the way, the boys discovered huckleberries feasting on the wild fruit. Just want to take the top. I'm going to taste it. You ready? It was very sweet. It's not bad. A little tart. Of course, the ultimate reward was making it to the top. I was thinking, I'm too tired, I'm sleepy, my feet hurting. And when I went up there, I said, wow, what a good view. I was glad I hiked up here. The hardest part was Climbing up the mountain yesterday, that, that was the hardest part. The most fun part was we played in the snow. When we got to the top and there were some nice views and berries, which they love, and they love the water, and just, you know, the whole experience kind of shifted their frame of mind. You know, that's what we try and do when we get these kids out here is not structure what they do and, and force head knowledge down so much, but give them some free time and let them experience and explore and have fun in nature. You know, I think they learn from really a, a fairly hard hike for a 10-year-old kid who's never been out of the city before. They learn that their effort pays off and self-esteem, and they feel better about their ability to conquer things. Over the next several days, the boys learned to conquer many things. Camping in the rain, starting a fire with wet wood, hiking challenging trails, even their fear of the unknown. They experienced not just outdoor adventures, but social ones as well, like a group outing for pizza and exploring a local farmer's market. They even got to sail the high seas in search of whales. We saw eagles, seals, turtles, we saw some sea lions, and I think I saw a dolphin. 
They might not have seen any whales, but their eyes were certainly opened to a bigger, brighter world filled with possibility where tiny discoveries it looks like she looks like transparent. Open young minds to broader horizons. There's things we just saw up there were just beautiful and eye-opening. These kind of things don't exist to them. Somebody saying, hey man, I'm gonna go take you on a boat and go whale watching. And I'm gonna take you up to the mountains, a daddy, a you know, father figure. I'm gonna cook you dinner when you get home. I'm gonna take you out into the woods and we're gonna go find mushrooms. And then we're gonna come home, we're gonna cook them for you in the morning. It doesn't happen, that's not a reality in some of these kids' lives. Without that trip, I know he would've got a chance to experience the mountain. Cause you know, there's no way we could've went. This is something that they'll never forget. Because we had those moments where we sat down and we talked together collectively and said we wanted them to file us away. They'll never forget it. You may wonder, how much of an impact can one trip have on a young person's life? Well, for these boys, it's not just the impact of the one trip that makes such a difference. It's the cumulative effect of all the trips they've taken with Great Outdoors University. Adventures in nature that continue to change their lives in meaningful ways. I'm going to think different about wildlife. So much stuff we do in the city is actually killing the wildlife, but we just don't notice it. When you go out there, there's nothing but wildlife, and you notice what you're doing. It changed me. It, it just lets you know that if I keep on pushing myself to doing something, I can do it. There's so much things I conquered while I was on the trip, like my fair heights. It helps me prepare for my upcoming trips in life. After the trip, I was thinking so many things. It's all about learning. Jairay, his sister, was stabbed to death in a fight. His mom was ready to give up, man, and we pushed her to keep Jairay a part of the program. And because she kept him a part of the program, now he, he got to go out to Washington. And I, and I know that these programs and the things we're doing is making a difference. It's really making a difference making a difference because people like Peter Scott and organizations like the Tennessee Wildlife Federation and the Boy Scouts have chosen to be involved in these kids lives. Making a difference because people care enough to share their time and resources so kids can grow and explore. Making a difference because these young people and their families appreciate the gifts given. Making a difference because what we do today can make a better tomorrow. I appreciate it because most people, most young men, don't get this experience. And uh, GLU just did this for us. We didn't pay anything. We just, all we can give them is our appreciation. I'm really happy to know that at 10 years of age, he uh, got a chance to take a trip like this. Most people, even at my age, have not had a trip like this in their life. What I hope is that they realize that not only were they somewhat privileged, but they have an obligation to live up to that privilege. And I think it'll give them a better understanding of how important natural beauty is and that there are different forms of natural beauty throughout the great country that we live in. As a youngster, you begin to see that there's a whole nother side of life. A lot of kids that we work with in the Scout Ridge Division, they have never even seen the pyramid here in Memphis. They haven't even been outside of their neighborhoods or communities. And when they see those things, man, they, that's, that's things that they can really put their fingers on. It becomes real to them. It becomes things that when they get older, they can plan for their children to do. These kids are like sponges. I mean, they soak it all up and uh, it's, it's very gratifying. I don't think they'll ever forget it. Maybe I can go back there again one day, because that was very phenomenal. It's just great. <laughs>